Let's practice naming binary ionic compounds. Make sure you are using a periodic table to find the charges when you practice this. You can pause the video on this screen to use this periodic table. It would be even better if you would practice labeling the ions on your own periodic table. Binary means two. There are always two different atoms in a binary compound. It is ionic because one is a metal and wants to positive lose electrons, and the other is a non-metal and wants to negative gain electrons. The first element is always a positive metal. The second ion is always a negative non-metal. So this will help you look these up a little faster. The first one will either be in these two columns or this column, and the second ion will be somewhere over here. So we have Li2O. Naming is so easy, you're going to love this. Just name lithium, don't worry about how many. Then change the second word to ide, so oxygen becomes oxide. So this is lithium oxide. This next one, CS, remember the first one's on the left, there it is, cesium, and Cl, the second one's on the right. Chlorine becomes chloride. All the negative ions must end in ide. And so this is cesium chloride. All right, I think you can go ahead and finish these through number 13. When you learn how to write the formula of an ionic compound, it's easiest if you'll cut out the ions cards that I have provided for you. If you can't print, just sketch these on a sheet of paper and cut them out. They don't have to be as big as mine. You can cut them out smaller if that would be faster and easier. I've made three copies of each ion card. Now let's write the formula for potassium oxide. Look up potassium on your periodic table. Remember, it's first, so it'll be on the left, either one of these two columns or aluminum. So here's potassium, letter K. What? Why is potassium K? That's Latin callium for potassium. So K, and it gets a charge of positive one. So get your positive one ion card. Now oxide. Oxide used to be oxygen. That's the closest we've got. So oxygen has a negative two. So get out your negative two card. Now, put them together until they match correctly. You'll notice it takes two potassiums and one oxide to make the perfect match. These want to lose one electron each, so it takes two of them to match together with the oxygen that wants to gain two electrons. So, remember, in our answer, we do not write charges. We do not write superscripts in the air. We only tell how many of each atom. We write subscripts on the bottom. So it took two potassiums, so K2, and one oxide, O. Remember, don't write a subscript of one. Notice how we didn't write the charges. There's no positive ones anywhere. And we also did not write a negative two anywhere. Notice this is just two. This means two potassium ions and one oxide ion. Notice the charges aren't anywhere in it. So be careful about that. Don't ever put a superscript, don't ever put charges in the formula of your compound. Let's try rubidium iodide. Rubidium has to be on the left. There it is, with a positive one. So let's get our positive one card. Iodine is over here on the right. Iodine becomes iodide, and that gets a negative one charge. Oh, it's the perfect match. You only need one of each. So that's RB. Since you only have one of each, do not put ones. You just write rubidium and iodine. 
because you don't ever put a one as a subscript. All right, let's try magnesium nitride. Magnesium has a positive two and nitride has a negative three. Okay, so wait, this is weird. If we add another positive two, that's too much positive. Well, then add another negative. Oh, great. That's still a mess. Oh, there we go. It works perfectly. So, we have to have three of the first ion and two of the second ion. Remember, don't put the charges. Tell how many it takes. So, it took three of these magnesiums, so Mg3, and two of these nitrogens, N2. For number 21, calcium gets a positive 2, oxide gets a negative 2. Aha! So it takes a single calcium and a single oxide. All right. I'd like to show you a faster and easier way of doing this. I have to show you the cards because that makes more sense, but once people get good at this, people get frustrated with how long this method takes. So let me show you a much faster method. Remember, we decided potassium had a positive one charge and oxide had a negative two. This is called the crisscross rule. You take the two off the oxygen, throw out the negative, and put it on the potassium. See how I crisscrossed it down from the oxygen down to the potassium, no charge. I took the one off the potassium, crisscrossed it down to the oxygen, except I don't write ones. That's way easier, isn't it? All right, rubidium was a positive one, iodide was a negative one. The one crosses down here, invisible one. Don't you see that invisible one? I've got some new clothes for you if, if, if you like that invisible one there. And then this one goes down here. There's another invisible one. Notice no charges. The charges tell positive or negative. The subscripts, the numbers down below, tell how many of each one. Magnesium has a positive two. Nitride has a negative three. Take the three off the nitrogen make it here on the magnesium, take the two off the magnesium, put it here on the nitrogen. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let me show you the one problem with this shortcut. You have to watch out for canceling. So calcium has a positive two and oxygen has a negative two. Well, if you just do the crisscross rule, you'd think it would be Ca2O2. But wait a minute, when we used the cards, it only took one of each. It already matched. This one lost two electrons, this one gained two electrons. So be careful. When you do your crisscross rule, if the numbers will cancel, then cancel them first. So if you have a positive two and a negative two, they will cancel and you'll have invisible ones. If you have a positive three and a negative three, they will cancel again and you'll have negative ones. Go ahead and finish this worksheet. Pause the video now because I am going to make sure that you get all of these right and I want to give you the answers. But I want you to try it first because if you just get the answers handed to you, it won't make as much sense. Here are the answers to your worksheet. Notice calcium has a positive two, phosphide has a negative three. Take the three, put it on the calcium. Take the two, put it on the phosphide. No charges. Make sure every single one of these does not have any charges in your answer. All the numbers should be subscripts down at the bottom. Notice with calcium sulfide, we have a positive two and a negative two, and the twos cancel, so it takes one calcium and one sulfur to make the compound.